Hello and welcome back to Japan's Perfect Pens. So accompanying the reviews of the Namiki Emperors which I've been doing, which there are going to be nearly 30 of by the time they're all finished, here is the writing sample review. Now as you can see here, the Namiki size 50 Emperor nib, it's a massive huge golden nib and it has its own writing characteristics, its own peculiarities, and I think it's worth talking about specifically to accompany these videos. And equally, because I don't want to repeat the same information in every single video, so I'm putting it here in one place. So, to begin with, let's look at an Amiki Emperor. Here is an Amiki Emperor Nightline, this gorgeous Raiden pen. Now, how does it write? Well, the good news is I'm going to show you. The bad news is, I'm not going to show you with this pen. This pen has never been inked. It is not inked. But the good news is I have three Namiki Emperors ready to show you that are inked. So today we'll see the Namiki Emperor Goldfish by Seiki Chida and two different Namiki Black Urushi, which is made by the Kokokai group, one of which has a slight stub grind. So to begin with, here is a black Namiki number 50 Urushi. This pen is not called an Emperor pen by Namiki. They don't sell it as an Emperor pen, many retailers do. Namiki just call this the Urushi line. Although it is Emperor size, it is functionally identical. So, Namiki 50 Urushi. And that's a medium nib. The ink is a Pilot Namiki Black on this and on the second one. This has got a slight stub grind. Now you see I'm writing from the side so it doesn't quite look like a normal stub wood. It's very wet and despite being stub, it's also very smooth. Now I'm going to reach a bit around the camera here so the writing is really sideways on. Um, but it is definitely have a, have a stub feel to it when I, when I pull vertically along the length of the nib. The lines certainly are wider than they are tall. So I'll just show you here, they're thick. Here it's quite thin, so you can see the variation just there. It's a slight grind. This isn't my pen, so I don't know the history of this pen. I don't know what the grind was intended to be. For me, it feels like a, a stub. Okay. So that was one Namiki 50 Urushi medium. Here is a nearly identical Namiki 50 Urushi, also a medium. This is my pen. This nib is straight out of the box, hasn't had a grind attached. So open the valve to allow the ink to flow into the section. There's probably a massive amount of ink stored in the feed anyway, so I probably don't need you just for this. So this is my Namiki 50, which is also Urushi medium. You might notice that this nib is single tone. The previous nib is two tone nib because it's a much older version of the same pen. These days this pen just comes in a single gold nib. It doesn't have the um, the silver plating over the Mount Fuji snow cap. Um, this is very wet and if anything it's even smoother than the previous one. So it's typical pilot Namiki in terms of being wet and smooth writer. You can see quite a lot of line variation there. Just a little bit of pressure and the fact the nib is so huge and it gives you a bit of variation. Not a flex nib, but certainly you can get quite a bit without putting too much pressure on it. And you can see on this one, the vertical and the horizontal strokes are more equal than on the previous one. Right. Here is my Namiki Goldfish. Again, this is an Emperor pen. This is an Emperor Makie Namiki pen and again, we undo the valve at the bottom, which you can barely see on the Makia if you check out the Goldfish review I have. And it's going to write more or less identically to the previous pen. This time it's using uh, Shinkai Irishizoku. This is my Namiki Emperor Goldfish. You can see the nib is two-tone here, like the first pen, unlike the newer modern uh, Namiki 50s in black or vermilion, the second one, which is the single tone. 
So if I do the lines again, quite easy to get quite a bit of variation just with a little bit of pressure. And this is again a lovely juicy wet writer. I'm currently writing on a rhodia paper and you know actually sometimes the rhodia can feather a little from writing with a particularly wet ink and using these pens. So if I want it to be really good I tend to use something like Tomorrow River. Um, but in this particular case I want the lines because my handwriting isn't particularly neat at the best of times and so it just helps me a little bit. Plus I mentioned before reaching around the tripod doesn't help that much. So have a look here. The main feature of these is the nibs are so big that your fingers are well away from the paper. So I'm showing you here it favours these large broad strokes. You can't really control it tightly with your fingers. So trying to control it tightly like that, as I would have a small nib, it doesn't really work particularly well. Now this for me is the main feature, apart from the size of the pen being massive and whether your hand can comfortably fit that. The main feature is the size of the nib means your hand is further away from the paper. So if I pull out my trusty beloved Waterman Expert, which I've had for many years, much smaller nib, much more finger control of small letters. Now I'm putting my hand further away and trying to duplicate how I write with the Emperor, it's, it's a little bit unfamiliar. So it's very different writing experience to write with this small nib versus the Emperor. I mean they are hugely different, let's line them up side by side. The Nimiki Emperor nib is nearly twice as long and if you look here, they put them at the same point, the fingers are so far back away from the paper on the goldfish. And that's the key feature. It's the broad strokes of the goldfish where your wrist and your hand control it. And with the Waterman Expert in this case, um, my fingers could control it quite tightly or with a Platinum Izumo, which I'll also put up a writing sample of. So this emperors, they really do love long letters. They love gestures. And look, they're very, very, very wet pens. So look, that wasn't so easy because of the camera. So here is a writing sample without the camera. It's slightly better, but what you can see is I've got the same three pens in the same order. And at the bottom, I've also put in my Namiki Chinkin Broad, which is the Matsu the Pine, the Platinum Izumo Medium, and the Waterman Expert. You can see straight away that the Namiki Mediums are quite similar to the Waterman Expert not too far off from the Namiki Broad, which is a much smaller nib on the Chinkin, when you put a little bit of pressure on the Emperor because of the bounciness, and quite a lot wider than the Platinum Izumo Medium. So the Platinum follows the Japanese rule of certainly being a size smaller than Western pens. I would say the Namiki Emperor doesn't really have that. It's about the same size as the Waterman Expert, and of course with that extra bit of variation. Now there's one more thing I want to just talk on while I put that gorgeous picture of the Namiki <laughs> Nibs all lined up there. Um, so people sometimes ask whether or not you can control the wetness of the pen with the valve. Now my experience is that the valve just shuts on or off the excess of the ink to the section and the section being very large and the feed being very large I don't think that particularly changed the wetness. So I treat it as an on-off switch. If you turn the switch off by closing the valve, eventually you'll run out of ink. So it'll go dry, but I don't think that's the same thing as being able to fine tune the wetness by how much you open or close the valve. So for me, the valve simply stops you running out of ink. And yes, you'll have this brief amount of time when you are about to run out of ink in the feed and it will go a bit drier, but I don't think it's something that you can perpetually control. It would require amazingly fine tuning of how open or closed the valve was to get just a small enough flow of ink out that it would have a continual impact on the amount of ink coming to the feed and coming to the uh, nib. So that's my take on that. I don't think you can control the wetness particularly. So look, I hope this was helpful. Please um, like and subscribe if you like this content. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.